So let's see. Uh, this is the uh, slide or uh, image that we used on uh, previous occasion. Uh, it's not uh, surprising that on that in that tiling, we covered the first article, um, which as we know is uh, to witness that there's but one God. Uh, and at that time, was using this, uh, this image here that I hope we all can see. And as I mentioned then that I wasn't looking for this image, you know how those things happen, right? <laughs> when you're not looking for something, it finds you before you can find it. And it was not Ramadan at the time. And now it is Ramadan and the very same image since so many, it seems has such great relevance, uh, relevance to this day and this time in the month that we're fasting now, right? The month of Ramadan. And we talked about um, how images are signs. Well, Allah is the one that has introduced this to uh, this, uh, introduces us to this, or calls us, invites us to looking for signs in the heavens. This is the Quran, right? Uh, that this is how Allah guides us. He guides us by our signs, by his signs, but our we must give our attention to the signs. Uh, now, I'm not going to, I can't belabor the points off because we know how time gets away from us, but the, it's just occurred to me how there was not Ramadan, but now to me, when I look at this, I see so much of a symbol, uh, uh, meaning of Ramadan, of the Ramadan fast. And I, I see the dates, which we know we break, the fast of prayer, peace be upon him, would break the dates, the fast, uh, iftar. Uh, vicar bees, the bees that are known as the vicar bees that are used to uh, recite the attributes of Allah or offer vicar, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar. Uh, and the lamp. Now, now, when we look at the lamp, we can see that this is. The light of the Quran is mentioned in the Quran. The lamp is mentioned in the Quran. It's a Quranic concept, right? Uh, the prophet prayers and peace be upon him is identified as a lamp spreading light. Siraj Mubin is a lamp spreading light. And the light of the Quran itself is the light is introduced as the nur. Allah is the light. The nur, nur Allah, nur al-samawati wa He is the light of the heavens and the earth. So this is a very significant beginning uh, but it's also related to the uh, what we discussed about images and how they how they convey ideas and they actually expand our perception of of various concepts. Uh, now, as often is the case when you want to uh, change slides, right? Huh, it's not doing it now. <laughs> So I'll keep trying to move it, uh, get the next slide to operate, but I'll continue so that we don't lose time. I think we had this problem before on Zoom. But I'll go on and begin. So we have uh, as the first, uh, the focus that Ramadan is a time for renewal. And the more I think about it, I believe the more we all will think about it, we can see if we don't already, I'm sure but most of us already know that this is a renewal. Uh, firstly, of course, a renewal of Allah, all the acts of worship and what the prophet modeled for us, all of them are intended to maintain, right? For main, faith maintenance, right? To maintain our faith. And the Ramadan, particularly in the month of Ramadan, we kind of like a full court press, full focus on the renewal uh, and particularly by fasting, of course, restraining our appetites uh, during the day, but also the encouragement to read the Quran, uh, uh, a, a Jews a section each day, to which renews our relationship with Allah through all of these, but through what has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad. So while we're being renewed uh, our relationship with Allah, it is through Prophet Muhammad's prayers and peace be upon him, and what was revealed, what was revealed to him. Uh, so uh, Ramadan is a renewal, uh, also revitalizes our faith. Uh, some of the you know, concepts is what Imam uh, Tariq mentioned last, Ta'aleem, 
uh, when we looked at how the self, how each of our individual self is improved during the month of Ramadan, right? How we are engaged in really in, because it is all by our own volition. Uh, the fasting is really a, is personal and collective at the same, at the same one in the same time. But we, we, um, it revives, revives, as I'm referring to in, in the terms of the principles of faith, the first being to worship Allah only, right? Uh, as expressed in the surah that all Muslims are encouraged and I think are happy to learn, to memorize and recite in the prayer. So, so it's ikhlas, which states very clearly, Bismillah rahman rahim say he Allah is one and only one, right? Allah is eternal and absolute. He begetteth not, nor is he begotten, and there's none like unto him. So this is the foundation of uh, uh, exclusively emphasis, emphasis on exclusivity of the oneness of Allah. Uh, as it becomes revealed to Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, uh, following the previous religion, following the prophets, follow, we're following the previous religious communities, who in this and on this point may have strayed. Um, however, is it while it's addressing that the immediate audience, as we know, was the audience there yeah. in Mecca, uh, Arabia, where the Prophet Prayers of Peace people was born and missioned. And the first audience there for this principle of belief of the six principles, the first big principle, as was in contrast to how the house of Abraham, alayhi salam on him be peace, had become corrupted, had become defiled, and the pure monotheistic belief that Abraham uh, began, uh, we recognize him as the father of, that, of our faith, of this belief, of this principle of oneness, uh, it had become, the house had become corrupted, that was built for the worship of the, of the oneness of God. Uh, and the idols that had been brought in uh, were removed, and those beliefs were uh, obliterated and uh, replaced with the Quran, the Quranic uh, view of uh, and what we call El Islam, the teachings of El Islam. So that's the first pillar uh, as the prophet prayers and peace. Uh, in his hadith, he says, to say, cool, I meant to be left. I believe in Allah, wa malakati, and in his angels. So that takes us to the second belief or uh, pillar. Uh, and both the these two bodies of, of our creed are preserved as in terms of pillars. And the first that we that we know of the pillars of faith, the pillars of faith, pillars of, um, of, of Islam, as the prophet described it, uh, he used the words bunia, which means to build. Bunia al-Islam. He's saying, Kala Rasulullah bunia al-Islam. The prophet, the Messenger of Allah said that al-Islam is built. Buniel is built uh, upon five, five essentials. So that's the uh, belief uh, called the Shahada, uh, Zakat, Salat, Zakat, Saum, and Hajj. And this section are also called also pillars. And these are the pillars of faith. The pillars of Islam are the five. The pillars of faith that we're reviewing now, the pillars of, uh, are the pillars of belief. Uh, the pillars of belief is to believe the oneness, the oneness of God, Tawheed, the oneness of God. Uh, and secondly, to believe in um, the books, as it is mentioned by the prophet. To believe in the book, uh, the angels, I'm sorry, to believe in the angels. And the way I remember the order is that it was the angel Jibreel that brought the book, the books. It was through the angel Jibreel that the Quran, the angel Jibreel that the Quran, was that all the scriptures, all the revelations, uh, were revealed by the medium of the angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Um, but something happened last on the last occasion when we reflected on la ilaha illallah, and of course we don't have the image, but the image was to emphasize that it's very, it's very necessary because the shahada is to negate other gods, to negate any god, any other deity, or any concept of a deity except Allah. And Elah is a reality. And it's telling us that there are no Elahs, but Allah is the Elah. Allah is the only Elah. La ilaha illa except Allah. And I found it very helpful in my studies and 
I'm still just a student of this religion uh, from every source that I can get, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, my main source. I knew nothing about Tawheed or about uh, how to pray Salat or any of that formally uh, until Imam Warathi bin Muhammad alayhi salam. May Allah's blessings, blessings and peace be, mercy be upon him. We have to always have regard and cherish that, that Allah sent someone to bring us to this, uh, this beautiful, to this life, to this life and this religion that gives us real, the real life. But the Eli, as I, in my studies, came to see that this is what the misassignment of powers to things. In one case, the idols, in the case of the, uh, of the prophet's life, the idols, they were, those, those were their Elas. In other words, Elas, is, in terms of definition, is something that fulfills you, right? Or fulfills your life in some way. But we can see how that can, nothing can do that except Allah. Only the one that designed, that originated our life. He originated our life. And then he determined the, our life as we are in these individual forms at this moment right now. So from the very first germ of human life that Allah created, right, to each of us having this autonomy, this consciousness, awareness, all this is under the plan, by the plan, exclusively the plan of Allah. So in the month of Ramadan, uh, I say it, it really expresses renewal in every sense of, 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 our, of our life, bringing to the wholeness of our life, the unity of our life, uh, the peace of mind we have in our life, right? All of that is to be recalled as we devote this time. So it's really a conscious devotion for an extended period of time that remove or renews our awareness of what maybe we've learned 20, 30, or 40 years ago. That is something that reality or that truth always needs to be renewed in our, in these circumstances that Allah created us. In this created circumstances where so many factors influence our reality, right? Our reality is conditioned upon certain other realities. And Allah is created with this measure of freedom. But the Quranic verse that comes to our mind that I think we should reflect on that Allah says in the Quran that he has not created the human being nor the jinn for any purpose other than his worship. Except for his worship. So when we think of ourselves, we could define our life really in that sense, can't we? That the whole purpose of our creation, the objective of our creation, the purpose is for worship. And that is reflected in normal or what we may say, human activities. Allah designed our human activities to be carried out and performed in a, in a way that respects God. And that's, and that's our worship. That is also worship, right? So uh, uh, Ramadan, in my view, and I think all of us can have input into this, right? That I pray a lot that each of us can reflect. And if you reflect, it will come. <laughs> if you reflect on Allah, as Allah says, and surely the wadhikullahu akbar, thinking on Allah is the greatest force for caring, for improving, for, multi for uh, cultivating our life, and for bringing out the life that within us is, uh, I'm pretty sure, is how it should be seen. The inner life is to come out, is to be brought out in the environment that Allah has placed us in. Uh, after we were excused from the garden, right, Allah chose to bring us to, to, to see us and to bring us to the earth for our development and for that meeting with Allah through the development. So during the month of Ramadan, we say no, we say la ilaha illallah. Seeing that, uh, um, Measuring that with the measuring that with the fast of Ramadan, I think we can see that we we are saying no. What we're saying no to is what our appetites. What are we saying yes to? We're saying yes that I make this sacrifice, I carry out this practice for Allah. So I'm saying yes to the will of Allah for me to worship and for me to fast, and I'm saying no to my appetites temporarily, as Allah has designed us to limit that. Uh, uh, that function for our basic human, basic human necessities. And all of this is to direct us for a whole life. All of the pillars of faith, the pillars of, uh, of Islam, they all are directing us to evolve our lives to, uh, along this path, which we call the Sarat al-Mustaqim, which Imam Muhammad pointed out many times 
is the path of uprightness. So the human being is that, need, that unique creature that Allah has created to stand upright and to walk upright on the earth. And it has been mentioned also that that position of qiyam, of standing, is really a symbolic uh, relationship of Allah's will connecting the higher, the higher knowledge, the source of all knowledge uh, descending from the, where the revelation descends is always spoken of in the Quran, isn't it? As coming down, right? Enzala said the message that he believes in what has descended to him. Unzila, right? So we are a very special creature in the month of fat, the month of Ramadan. We can see that uh, the fast does renew this relationship that we have with Allah, and that Allah wants to see how we see ourselves. So the angels is real, and the angels that carry out Allah's will. Uh, the angels, and we're, 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 it's beautiful to think of the angels, how, how they acknowledge God uh, unreservedly, right? Unconditionally, uh, they were not created with the um, ability to disagree. They don't have that nature, right? Uh, Allah gave that freedom. He gave us that measure of freedom to us. But the angels are those creatures that they also make sajda to us. Uh, Allah says in the Quran that to Allah does all things, all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, whether they are moving, living creatures, or they are angels. So this belief is of that creation of God that also makes a sajda to God and serves God in the, in the management of the creation and in carrying out Allah's will. And the angels are not divine. They are not gods. They are not uh, small gods, right? They have no free will to choose between right and wrong, but yet they are still not God. They are still what? Just servants of Allah. They always do what is, is best, uh, what is uh, what they are commanded in service to Allah. And in service to Allah's plan, which means Allah has given us angels to even serve and help us in our life, right? He's given us also angels, uh, protecting angels, but also angels that are recording. So that is another factor why we should think of uh, the necessity or the basic necessity to always be in a sense of renewing or improving, right? Always renewing and improving our faith. In renewing and improving, we're also in strengthening it, revitalizing. And this is really that month that we really enjoy revitalizing our faith. And as we revitalize our faith as a Muslim, a religious family, a religious community, right? That is also part of our faith because the coming together of us, um, in congregation, this is a very important feature uh, in the revelation. Uh, the Juma itself is a surah of the Quran, the gathering on the blessed and the sacred day of Friday for, for remembrance and remembrance of Allah. So Imam Muhammad, he commented about, his comments about the angels, he said that the angels' nature is not like that of the human being. Uh, they, angels are beyond the grasp of ordinary human comprehension. It's not a common phenomenon that we can recognize very easily. It's uh, purely a separate creation by God than human, uh, but they work in coordinate, they coordinate with, the, they work in function with uh, the human life and the God's, really God's creation. Uh, there are no males or females. They don't have a male or female nature. They're not tested by frustration. They don't have short tempers, right? Uh, they don't have sexual appetites and passions for food and such as like as what humans share. Uh, Imam Muhammad said they are, uh, they are without knowing they are food or desire, they don't have the food or desire to fix things without knowing what they are doing. Now that's uniquely a teaching method of Imam Dabdi Muhammad. He wants us to see the uniqueness of the angels or the, by showing us the uniqueness of the angels, he's showing us at the same time the new uniqueness of the human being, the human nature. That the human being is not fixed in this mold and this structure of this automated mold, right? We will have weaknesses. We will have these tendencies. We will be foolish at certain times, right? Uh, we will embarrass ourselves sometimes, right? Or we will embarrass others. Uh, or we will attempt to do some things that are beyond our abilities. We will have ego, we have ego trips that we will do, right? So it's good to see how we uh, uh, contrast with the angels 
so that we can really appreciate that Allah has a creation here that is really playing a major role in the whole life and the scheme of things. So the belief in the angels is the second of these pillars. Thirdly, the belief in the prophets, um, the belief in the messengers of God, the prophets and messengers of God, which we know when we read the Quran, we see them named. Uh, I think um, you may have read in your studies that I think there are 25 prophets named in the Quran, but the uh, Quran mentions that there are many, many that are not, not named in the Quran. And I think in the Hadith of the Prophet, maybe someone uh, online can remember what the Prophet, the Prophet said, that there are angels, there are some, several hundred thousand, hundred and some thousand uh, uh, prophets, I'm sorry, prophets that have been sent. Uh, and I mean, we do know that then from reading the Quran, that Allah says that there's never a community that Allah has not sent a warner, does not, Allah does not send a warner to. And another thing uh, that is mentioned about the prophets they sent to help us understand this phenomenon of prophethood is that Allah says whenever he sends a message or warn them, he sends them to speak into the language that of the people. And we especially are particularly appreciative that the message has come to us and has been conveyed to us in a language that we clearly understand. Uh, in our unique, uh, very unique, somewhat unique circumstances as being a minority uh, here, a minority race, a minority religious community in America, but yet we are very much enlivened, and very much invigorated um, by Islam coming uh, among us. And we have a very beautiful history, a very historical history. So belief in the prophets and messengers of God. Uh, Abraham, uh, we know, and briefly, we can move on because time is moving. Uh, the prophet prayers and people shared a hadith with us. And I always re reflect that when we read, when we think of a hadith, someone in his presence wrote, the, uh, received the hadith, wrote the hadith, conveyed the hadith, and we know how it is, right? There's always, a, when the message is new and, and bright and fresh and new, people attract to it in groups, in large numbers. And they spend hours and days and nights uh, studying and listening to and preaching and speaking to and writing, recording this brand new message. So this was like a burst of life, a brand new burst of life that came there in that very dark area in the um, Middle Evil uh, Mecca at the time, which has really shrunk back into a very dark state. But the prophets, uh, the hadith of the prophet, where well, he's saying that Allah had revealed um, to the prophets, to many prophets and messengers, and that he was the final prophet or the, the seal of the prophets. The message was coming now, the Quran was coming now to extend the previous revelation, but also to conclude what major issues those uh, revelations were given to address the need and the rising up of the human of humanity, right? The raising up the 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 approaching this, this community, this ideal model community. This is what Islam is for. Uh, it's good to understand angels. It's so good to understand that revelation didn't come to make us angels. And the prophet, it was necessary for him, the prophet prayers and peace upon him, to make that point clear. He said, Anabashirun mithrukum, I am a human mortal just as you are, right? If a hearth, as Allah says, if the earth had been uh, populated with angels, he would have sent an angel as a messenger. So it's clear that this work is the work of Allah raising up uh, humanity to its uh, to the aim, the aim that Allah has set for us when he created Adam. And Allah says of that soul that was created, right, of the soul that Allah created uh, of from one soul, the creation from one soul, that he did what? He breathed into him, it, it of his ruh, of his spirit. So it brings us back to what? The renewal in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan, fasting in the Ramadan, the checking of our appetites, of our urges, the checking of those urges with the fast is actually to renew that spirit of God, renew that spirit of worship. The spirit of worship is the spirit of rec recognition of God's will. Of God's signs and the, the met and what all the God signs in this reality are saying to us, and they're saying 
the first pillar, la ilaha illallah, that there's no source for any, any power or force in the creation or any development, that, except that it comes as a result of God's, of Allah himself, of his will. It is all of his creation, and that's all it can be to God, because Allah says what? Nothing approaches him except his glory. So again, Ramadan fasting renews that spirit of service, of our, of our, our uh, uh, position that God has created us, which is the noblest position. The noblest position is that of a servant. And of course, we know Satan wants to uh, confuse that for the human being and make human beings to think, to uh, lead the human beings, to influence human beings to think that the satisfaction of our ego is the aim in life. No, the, the, the fulfillment of the potential of our soul along with the ego is the objective of our life. Allah gave us our egos to help us become better servants and better Muslims and believers, right? So Imam Muhammad said that of, in terms of the prophets of God, uh, that we should, uh, if we study and acknowledge the substance of what the prophets taught, we will see that truth is universal. Imam Muhammad was very conscious of this, very conscious that the previous scriptures are very, as is mentioned in the Quran, but there is a tendency in Muslim thinking to ignore the previous scriptures or to think that they are really have been, I guess, totally replaced with the Quran. But when we read the Quran, we read of those books and we receive, we read also, as we have in the recent reading, I believe it was yesterday's reading, the responsibility that those prophets had or the those that early community, the early Jewish community, Christian community, uh, the responsibility that they were to be carrying it out. And why is Allah reminding of us of that? So that our community, the Muslim, now the new Muslim, the, the new Ummah, it, it will serve its responsibility. What is the responsibility of the uh, Ummah of Muhammad, Ummah of Rasulullah, the model community? It says, Ukrijat the Nas, for the benefit, for the benefit of humanity. So it's all purpose directed, right? It's all purpose based. So again, fasting is renew that sense of purpose that we are as Muslims. Uh, Islam didn't come to us just to make us happy, right? It came to us uh, to enlist us in the broader uh, movement that Allah began back with uh, Adam, uh, Abraham, alayhi salam. And of course, we have to we have to mention the prophet's mihraj, his ascension that's mentioned in the Quran and in the Hadith on the night journey where the prophet was was taken up uh, up to the higher heavens where he met the, the, the seven prophets. And this is another, um, I guess, I wouldn't call it a tidbit, but Islamic um, a phrase or idea or concept, small ones that it's good to try to memorize. So when we can reflect the reflect of the prophet, how important that, that higher heaven uh, is and the seven levels that Imam Muhammad lectured on many times. We know the first one begins with uh, Abraham, I'm sorry, with Adam. Starts from the beginning. Uh, the second one, if I can remember them correctly, right, uh, was, uh, who's on the second? Yusuf is on the third. Uh, Idris is on the fourth. On the fifth is, uh, uh, Moses, Aaron, and the sixth is his brother Moses, Musa. And I remember the man saying Musa was always above Aaron. Uh, so, uh, so now I can remember who's on the second. Jesus, uh, uh, Esau, Jesus, and John. Thank you. Jesus and John. Yusuf on the third, Idris, which means from Darasa to study, right? On the fourth, uh, who did I say was the fifth? Aaron, Moses, Aaron. and we know who's on the seventh, Ibrahim. You didn't mention Ibrahim. Ibrahim is on the seventh, right? Abraham is on the seventh. And the prophet prayers of peace be greeted each of them on his ascension. And then he did what? Led them in, in Salat. All in Salat, which tells us of our prophet. So we're renewing and renewing, we're renewing uh, 
our faith, renewing the tradition, the heritage of Islam, the heritage of revelation, and also the heritage of all the prophets. You doing okay? Imam Muhammad, he said, if we study the knowledge, the substance of what the prophets taught, we will see that truth is universal. And this is also in reflects the, the, the aim and purpose of the Kaaba, doesn't it? It was a house built, Bunia, again, Bunia Linnas, were built for all human beings. And we're told that it is in, in, in it is blessings, right? In it is blessings. So when we make the Hajj, right? When we make Hajj, we're making to, to make a statement to physically involve our whole life, our, all our energies, our consciousness, in the fact that we believe that Allah is bringing all humanity together. And we read in the Quran, of course, signs that Allah is saying that at, once, at one point in time, humanity was what? One community. As the, and the Bible says, it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end, right? So let's move on to the next, the fourth uh, arcan. They're called Arcano Islam, the pillars of Islam. And the word Arcan might be familiar to some of you who lived in Chicago and heard of these uh, social clubs. Some may call them gangs, maybe, but the social groups that were called the Ru El Rukins. It's something how the Arabic language is kind of people uh, pick it up for different things, right? But it means a pillar, as we see, these are pillars of, uh, of faith. So these are pillars, without, without these pillars, our faith is uh, incomplete. So the fourth one is belief in the revealed books. Uh, as we've already mentioned, some of the prophets, uh, the books are mentioned in the Quran. Uh, what are some of those books? Books, of the, books that are mentioned in the Quran. The Quran, the book, the, the verse says, the message of Allah, we want to read that first, okay? Message of Allah, Amana Rasulullah, Amana Rasulullah, Amana Rasulu. That's in the that's in the Surah Baqarah, which we read earlier in the in the month, in the fast during the fast, right? Said that the message believes. I think that we all should stop and pause when that's read, when we reflect in the context of the of the of the, of the revelation. The law is pointing that out, that the messenger, that what we're believing is what the messenger also believes in. So in renewal, in, things, in terms of renewal of our, our religious consciousness, of our dedication or rededication to our beliefs, our revitalizing of what we do believe in, this is also what the prophet believes in. So he too is a believer, of course, right? But he's telling us here as it was being revealed and we're that he believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, as do the uh, people of faith. And each one of them believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers. And they say, we make no distinction between one and the other. So belief in the sacred books, uh, Imam Muhammad comments, we must not deny the previous sacred scriptures or we will be cutting ourselves off from part of our spiritual view. And that spiritual view takes us back to the house of Abraham, to the house built by Abraham uh, and his son Ismail, right? That was not built for one, it was built for all humanity, right? For the collective uh, body. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came after Christ Jesus and he inherited, this is, um, Imam Muhammad, quote, and it reminds me of the classes that Imam Muhammad taught each Sunday, each and every Sunday for, for a few years. But when he admitted the adults to join the class, he said that what he was teaching there was comparative religion and classical Arabic. So as part of our focus on classical, uh, classical or religion, right, on a comparative religious studies, this is really a Quranic study, Quranic topic, because it's a lot that tells us about the previous prophets, and not only about the previous prophets, but how their communities responded to them, right? uh, and how communities strayed from the Sirat and Mustaqim, or from that uh, purity of Tawheed that Abraham and his son Ismail established, right? 
So the ma'am says that Prophet Muhammad came after Christ Jesus, according to peace, and inherited not only the message that he received, but also the message, uh, messages received by all the other prophets who preceded Christ Jesus. So it's not a small, it's not just a religious thing. It's not, Islam is not just religion, uh, just religion, just religion in a very simple um, concept. But it's a universal truth that is better to be understood in a reverse, uh, universal sense. Now, Raj, you reminded us of something that Imam Muhammad had introduced us to in terms of Christianity, uh, passing the uh, baton, right, to Islam in terms of scripture and in terms of the Bible. You want to share that with us how the Bible ends, ended? Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Imam, alayhi salam, um, has told us, and, and one of the things he said was that one of the things that the Islamic world missed is the uh, arduous study of the previous scriptures and how those scriptures and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed people in the past and how those scriptures are tied to, uh, to the, the uh, revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, it was pointed out by uh, one of the Imam's students that the Bible that ends in Revelation is picked up in al uh in the Quran. Uh, the, the Revelation points out that the, the language in the Bible is locked up with seven seals. And in, in Al-Fatiha, as we know, there are seven ayah that opens, uh, that opens the book and is the key is the key to our scripture, the mother of the book, as well as the, uh, uh, a field of study that there are volumes and volumes and volumes of literature that's written on just al fatiha itself. Alhamdulillah, comparative religion. Well, we got our PowerPoint back. It came back to uh, accommodate us. <laughs> Uh, pillar five, so the fifth uh, pillar, belief in the last day. Uh, and many names, many um, describe many descriptions in the Quran of that day Yamul Kiyama, uh, Yamul uh, Yamu Din, uh, Yamul Akhira, uh, and others of the last day. It's the fifth pillar of our belief. Uh, and the, the verse, uh, what was the verse? Do we have that verse? Uh, can't see the number of that verse, but uh, it's a El Bakr 2 in Bakr. It's not righteousness uh, that you turn your faces towards east or west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah in the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers to spend of your sub substance out of love for him. So the last day, the day of judgment that will take place when all human beings will be resurrected uh, to stand before Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and answer, and we will answer for our deeds. And we know as we're um, frequencing the, uh, the burial of our dear beloved brothers and sisters, believers, the grave site we know is mentioned about the final test that we will have, the prophet mentioned that, a final test of our life, we'll be asked about our religion. We'll be asked about our belief, our prophet, right? Uh, what, what, what we believed. Uh, so we want to renew that constantly, right? Mm -hmm. As I say, as, as our to opportunity for renewal is all the time, of course. Uh, we're renewing five times a day with the five prayers that uh, are required. But in a month, we're even more renewed. But the whole religion is about renewal. Uh, in one sense or another, we're renewing, as we mentioned already, um, the, the, the service, the revelation to Abraham and Allah guiding him to understand the oneness, Tawheed, and the oneness of Allah, right? So we're always renewing the faith in, in all of his aspects. 
So Imam Muhammad uh, commented in terms of the day of resurrection. He said the fifth article of faith is belief in the day of resurrection or the life after death. Once our physical life ends, we enter a new creation, a new form of existence in which we receive further rewards or punishment. So when we lower our beloved brother, sister, relative, uh, which we will be lowered, uh, we will be lowered, right? It's not, it's only the resting place for the vessel. But as we see here on the resurrection, that essential life that Allah has really allowed, guided us to develop, and of course, it cannot happen except by Allah's will, that we will be, and we will find ourselves, and we will arrive in a new creation. And the prophet, I promise the peace of God, he mentioned, he said, really the death only occurs like the, the prick of a pen. Mentally, we probably anticipate an extended, right, or protracted feeling or experience, but the prophet is saying that it's just like the prick of a pen. And I think there are other verses, uh, uh, Hadith saying it's like, you know, you go to sleep and waking up. But uh, ma'am is pointing out it's a new form of existence, which we receive further rewards or punishment. The balance is still a balance of justice and still the limited freedom that we are given is a freedom that comes with responsibility. So we want rewards and we have to also accept the demerits. Uh, we pray a lot that it won't be here. If we have punishment, we will pray a lot that we're really praying that Allah will forgive us and will, will purify us. And that the prayers of those at the Janazah, I'm praying that you all's prayers, inshallah, right, will be answered and that we will not, we will be forgiven, right? So that's our objective. But it's very encouraging, isn't it? The saying of the prophet prayers and peace be upon him. And what did he say that is the benefit of fasting the month of Ramadan? The person who fasts, throughout the month of Ramadan, believing in Allah, what happens? What is the effect? I know somebody wants to unmute and point that, that, that great blessing. That great blessing. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is promised. And that's the three also, right? The three, Allah said the first sec, of part of Ramadan, the first 10 days, mercy. Second 10 days, forgiveness. And the third Freedom, liberation from the fire. But another hadith of prophet prayers, if you also says that when we complete the fast of Ramadan with faith, it is as though you are first just born from your mother's womb. Fresh slate, brand new slate. You get to start all over again for as long as you can <laughs> until that next trial or that next uh, occasion where we are human beings, right? And we just would do what human beings do, right? Less than ideal, or less than perfect. But that's why we can rest assured that we can truthfully uh, say that Islam, uh, fasting is a renewal because of those words that the prophet, uh, prophet identify the impact of it on our on our being, on our soul. So what else to come comment? I'm going to close. Uh, with this and just the sixth one, and I'll be finished. And we can have, uh, of course, open discussion, comment, insights, reflections. Uh, the month of Ramadan is a month for reflection. Dhikr, as the Prophet said, well, dhikrullahu akbar, and thinking on, on Allah is the, has the greatest benefit. So our physical life ends when we enter, uh, physical ends, and then we enter a new creation, as Imam Muhammad Rahim Allah said. Because our life in this world is a test perspective of Islam is, is, is best for us. Our life in this world is a test which cannot be completed. This is insight without another stage. When you faithfully pray to Allah and ask for Allah's guidance, Allah then opens up the secrets of the, of, of the earth, of reality, of life. What is hidden from us, what is hidden from our consciousness, prayer and devotion to God, God opens that up. Allah always wants to give us, right? Allah is the giving. He's a Rahman, right? That's part of his, 
Allah's attributes is to give. And uh, what was the prophet tells that Allah gives without kind, counting. Allah gives without counting. So he's looking for the opportunity to always expand our life and to enhance our life. So the man Muhammad is uh, obviously blessed to see that our life is tip is uh, temporary and limited. And when you can see the limitations, what brings that to you, right? That's not just something you trip up on, right? Or you stumble on. That is something, that's perceptions that we earn, right? That's that clear perception that's mentioned in the Quran. It's called yaqeen, ain't the yaqeen. When you see clearly your life defined, you can see the limits, how it's defined, and that it is defined in a way that it leads to the next step, the next stage. And the prophet prayers of peace before he said that fasting, one of his, about fasting, that it is going to represent us on the day of judgment. Lastly, the six of the uh, pillars of Islam, pillars of faith, is to believe in the dec divine decree. We will observe on the 27th night or among the last 10 nights called Laylatul to Qadr, the night of power. The word is Qadr, the night of power, the night of potential, uh, is the night in which the Quran is, was revealed. Uh, and we can uh, observe that that is the night that the guidance for humanity came down. But also we could consider as all, it is mentioned in the Quran of a divine decree such as a pandemic. It too is mentioned, an uh, epidemic uh, from heaven. That's what is mentioned. A pandemic from heaven, one of the verses, one of the readings, uh, I think two or three days ago. That also is divine by divine decree. And we know what Qadrihi, Allah says, revealed what Qadrihi, what Qadrihi, there's the word Qadr, what Qadrihi, Sharihi, what Qadrihi, Khairihi, the potential for good, what Sharihi, and the potential for evil, men Allah Ta'ala, is from Allah. Doesn't mean that Allah gives good, Allah gives bad, it means that the possibilities for the outcome of things, right? If you do good, you will the benefit, the rewards of it from that uh, activity will be good. It's it's uh, designed, it's systemized, right? That's the nature of doing good that it gives. Us. And uh, that's the verse in the Quran, I believe, right? So does Allah uh, give anything other than good? The reward for good is that. That's what it is. The, is the reward for good is good. Can the reward for good be anything other than good? But this is intrinsic in this, what we call reality, our perceptive reality. It has a, a hidden design, a function. Uh, and we know all those functions. We know the reactions to things, right? We know how, how this begets that, right? How carelessness begets waste, for example. Uh, but you know, Allah says, no misfortune. This is the Quran verse that really speaks to the Qadr. No misfortune can happen on earth or in the nefs, in your soul, but that it is recorded in a decree we bring into existence. And truly, this is easy for Allah. That's in Surah the Iron, Hadith 57, verse 22, for those who want to read it and do further reflection. So as I conclude with Imam Muhammad's uh, commentary, uh, comment on this belief, on this principle of belief, of Qadr, belief in the Qadr, uh, the potential for benefit and harm. He said the sixth article of faith is belief in the divine ordinance, that the power to do anything proceeds from Allah. This is another uh, branch uh, of understanding of Qadr, that the ability to proceed comes, the, the ability that we have, that comes from Allah. But we are responsible for the actions, for our actions. We're playing a part, right? We're taking, uh, we have, we have a, a conscious freedom. We're free to have a conscious uh, um, participation, right, in the act. And we are responsible for that. But Allah judges according to our intentions. That's what we're told, right? Because this, because of this, this wide range here, right, of deeds for, uh, for, for, for results, for actions and consequences, Allah has set his mercy overrides, and that he will judge by what is intended in our deeds. So the imam says, having a belief in divine ordinance does not contradict man's limited free will of consciousness and actions, right? 
And he said that the limited free will, which, which Allah has given us, has its own nature. And that's really what contextualizes, frames that sense of freedom. That the free will that Allah has given has its own nature. And Allah has established a law in his creation that does what? It rewards those who do good and it punishes. That's a, a universal law. And that's why we really have to be conscious of Allah. That is why we have to keep up prayer, right? Establish regular prayer and regular charity. That's why we have to form spiritual habits or habits that all uh, support our, our belief, that support this reality, that there, there is a universal law that Allah has established that does reward and punish. And lastly, Allah has made human beings free to shape their own futures. So when we see all these considerations, we see how this is a very complete concept and is a very necessary concept for creatures to how Allah has designed our life to have this mind, this body, uh, and this intellect, and this and our souls, our mind, body, and souls, and all three must be given. Thank you all for this opportunity to share some reflections in this blessed month of Ramadan. Uh, thank you all for the invitation and, and allowing me and being patient with uh, this humble brother and his efforts to uh, share what Allah is blessing us with. Alhamdulillah. So I guess we do have time for for you all to share. Unmute if you don't have any background noise. Because <laughs> we may hear the background noise more than we can hear you. I'm sure we have some uh, renewal experiences so far in these, what, eight days? Hmm. Or whatever else you like to think is uh, important for us to have. The floor is open. Assalamualaikum. Ramadan Mubarak to all of our participants today and our brother Imam. And I'd just like to point out that uh, Imam Rabani is a treasure and a blessing to this community. And we should realize that too for his arduous study and then to come back and bring that study in and to share that uh, with us. It's, it's a great asset that we have, and uh, we should acknowledge it and respect it. He's my brother. Uh, I respect him. Uh, we socialize together, so I know he's a humble brother also. Uh, One thing I cannot I, I, do, I cannot outwork Bashir Asa. <laughs> no, you, we work together. <laughs> we all work together. <laughs> Sometimes by your side, I may need to pull back a little bit. Um, but in, in your um, presentation today, it, it, it had my mind working. I, I jotted a few things down. Uh, we'll need another half an hour, which I, we, we don't have. But, uh, you know, just reflecting on this Ramadan, uh, uh, what it is, this, this, this fasting period, you know, it's physical, mental, and spiritual. Uh, we have a physical fasting. Uh, mentally, we're reading the Quran and, and reflecting. And our spirits uh, are just higher. You know, it, uh, when we, we uh, get to the end of this month, uh, we don't want to leave it. And our spirits are so high. And Allah says, fasting is for me. Although we're doing many of the things that Allah has asked us to do, uh, and we, when we bear witnessing to Allah and, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're doing salat, doing sakat, fasting and hajj, they're more conscious during this period of the month. We're more conscious during this period of the month. And I think possibly that's when Allah says, fasting is for me, because mm -hmm. we become more conscious, although we're doing these same things. He said, all of these things are for man's benefit. Mm -hmm. The common mind. The salat is a cat, siam, and the hajj. And one thing too, uh, I like to point out, you know, during this this period too, uh, it says Jibril every Ramadan. And, and correct me, Imam uh, Rabani, if 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 I'm not correct, that he would come and recite the Quran with Prophet Muhammad during during Ramadan. Is that correct? 
That's absolutely uh, correct how the hadith is, is read. It says just that. And then it says, but the last year of the prophet's life, he recited it to him twice. Okay. And I think, too, uh, with the Imam Wardi Muhammad establishing the Ramadan session, this may have a, a, a relationship uh, to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, one other uh, piece of information I'd like to provide was I was on another session on, on a word to make, make people. And Imam Ronald Shaheed was on there talking about his book. And he pointed this out. He said that Eid is only mentioned in the Quran when it talks about Jesus and his last supper. Yeah. So that was something that uh, I came across today. Yeah. Wasn't aware of it. Uh, you did mention about Jananza. And I'd like to make an announcement that our brother, uh, Abdul Kareem Sabor, his Jananza will be tomorrow, Monday. Uh, he passed some time ago. There were some issues and in, 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 uh, uh, that have been cleared up now. And my information I've received at his Jananza uh, is going to be tomorrow. Abdul Kareem Sabor was a barber. Uh, they had our barber shop on 79th Street for years. So I, I wanted to make that announcement. Yeah, he was Robert 52X. I was Robert 53X. And I'm finished. That's on leg. Man, you finished under the law. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard on you. <laughs> um, uh, Thank you. For, for your uh, love, brother, brother Bashi, I want to echo your comments regarding our brother, uh, brother Rabani. It, it doesn't go unnoticed that, um, that he is a treasure to the community. And uh, brother Rabani, I often reflect on it. But if I say too much, then you might have to go make select. So I, I know how that is. So. I'm not going. I'm not going to say much. I'm gonna do that from Bashir. That from Bashir. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted. I wanted to make this point because it. It. it uh, you know, I've been reflecting on this. Uh, I, I. I don't take for granted how blessed we are as a as a people, uh, with Al Islam being our inheritance from the. Pay from our uh, our uh, past, and also that this uh, way of life gives us a lens by which we we view our existence and the way we view the world and and the way we review we we, we review uh, the potential after this life and. Uh, and also how blessed we are to, as you mentioned, remember, Bunny, to have Allah send someone to us who has, uh, who has a language that is not, that didn't come from the world, that it could have only come from, uh, from a blessing from Allah. And we should not take that for granted either. Uh, we should, and I know many of us do, but yeah. we should do everything we can to study Imam Muhammad's language because he has said that that language will endure uh, for as long as we are here. Yeah. So I wanted to just uh, make that point. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And we all, and having lived that, it's really because part of our uh, consciousness.